I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Shameless Sex Podcast, your favorite sex podcast ever. We're coming to you live from Uranus. From Uranus. Uranus. That's what my astrology friend, Julia, oh, says. Uranus. Uh, Uranus. I'm actually having a session with her on Friday. Are you? Uh, I sure am. We've talked about her before on the show. Not her. Not her, but her services. Yes, her services. <laughs> yes. Julia, we talked about you on the show. We're well, like, Back, maybe Julia. on the next show you can tell us what you learned and we can tell people where they can go and learn more about Uranus. And Yeah, but we're not really on Uranus because if we were, then we would be engulfed in gas flames gas like your your like your anus has gas don't talk about my uranus it is way. anal uranus. august too by the that's way that's why i said that we're coming to you live from uranus not uh, your anus but your oh, anus. i get it now it's been a day amy's had a day lord of mercy she's had some moments oh but one thing i wanted to share here's, Ooh, a, here's snap, a happy thing snap came i just out snapped the snap. it, it was, no it's a joyful thing okay so you know how kim and nami on her instagram she does um amazing places to fuck have you looked at that before and it's all these super sexy places where you know it's like ten thousand dollars a night to stay at that place, and it's beautiful and, I, and it's gorgeous. I want to go fuck there, Kim and Ami. Please take me there. My partner and I just went to Shasta uh, in California. If you don't live in California, and we're kind of rugged, we like to get dirty and you know go hack in the woods and things. And we created the the term uh, "rugged places to fuck" because we were naked on a log in the middle of like a swampy lake thing. <laughs> And I hate he happened to like go down on me for a little bit, and it's beautiful because there's no one else there, and it has a gorgeous view. And it, but it wasn't like your five star, ten thousand dollar night. It was rugged, or like on the top of a rock with a beautiful view overlooking the mountain. But it's like poking your butt because the rock is pretty badass. Anyways, wow. so I'm gonna start an Instagram called Rugged Places to Bone. That's what is happening. Um, okay, everyone, this episode today. As with Keely Rankin, she's awesome. It's on premature ejaculation, delayed ejaculation, erectile dysfunction. You'll hear why we actually don't love the terms premature ejaculation. She actually talks more about ejacula- ejaculatory control or male performance struggling. She's a, she is a male performance struggling expert. So if you're struggling with your performance with your wang, she is an expert in this. The erectile challenges. Mm, there's so many challenges with those erections. Uh, so in other news, guess what? Before we dive into the podcast, there's a flash sale. Flash sale, everyone. Flash, flash, flash. Flash, sale, flash, 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 on, flash sale. Go to our website. Scroll down. So shamelesssex.com. Scroll down. Click on the banner that has t-shirts and things. So t-shirts. There's masks. There's coffee mugs. All kinds of things. And if you click on it, you can get up to 35% off of your Shameless Sex gear. You can be part of the Shameless Sex revolution. And guess what? Proceeds go to a good cause. We are donating all the proceeds to the Black Lives Matter movement. And you can be part of the Shameless Sex revolution. So go check it out now. Okay, press pause or reset. Go. All right, and now you're back. Awesome. That was so good. You're so quick and efficient. What'd you get? What'd you get? I got a hoodie, and I got a uh, long You've sleeve. actually been holding my shirt hostage because you were out of town. It's in there. I know. A tank top. It wasn't on purpose. It's real cute. You hostage it. It looks nice. By accident. I would like, I'm going to blackmail you. Uh, ransom. Ransom. It's ransom. I want to buy Legend of Onesie. Oh, I don't know if they make dog onesies yet. Dude, kid, he fits kid, in. No, he fits into a child onesie. Oh, kid onesies? That's what I did for him when he got... Uh, Oh, anyone out there that has a dog that they're going to get, I I will say neutered because he was neutered. I don't know about spayed. Castrated. Instead of the cone, I put a, a child onesie on him. Now, depending on the dog size, he couldn't get to his butt. Oh, cause yeah, your dog's I just tiny. Po- yeah. I poked his hole through the snaps in the back, and then he couldn't itch, 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 itch. It was genius. I still have the onesies. Adorable. Yeah, I'll give them. Now to you need a now. shameless sex one though. I know, so I'm saying now I could just put them in one just for fun, not for shameless re- self promotion. You're walking your dog itching. in a dog park and we get five new fans. Yeah. Thanks, Legend. Thank you, Legend. Okay, everyone. Are you ready for a sex question? Yeah. 
I'm a 27-year-old straight male who has always struggled with premature ejaculation. It would normally only take 30 seconds of penetrative sex for me to ejaculate. Me lasting a long time would be probably two minutes of penetrative sex. My partner is very supportive and says that it isn't an issue for her, which is great, but I want to have better sex, and it's an issue for me. I listened to all of your podcasts about premature ejaculation, and I've experiment- experimented with breathing and have been doing pelvic floor exercises to strengthen for about the last month, and I feel like I've made little to no progress. I've also stopped watching porn after watching porn for three to four times a week since I was 15, as I read that this could help. Is there anything that you could suggest or recommend? Well, dear listener, guess what? This episode is for you because we are here with the male performance expert on ejaculatory control, erection stuff. Uh, And so we'll, we'll share a little bit here, but just stay tuned because she's going to talk all about it. She even has a whole program on this. One thing that I want to just do the kind of the cliff notes version, this is most likely just all in your head. It's a neural pathway that has been created, which is a story that is a strong story that's now become a belief in your brain from having some experiences with premature ejaculation. Um, and why we don't love the term premature ejaculation is because it is a social construct. It's pre- premature for whom? Who decided it's too soon or too early, right? Uh, if people are having pleasure and orgasms, and that's all good. And um, sometimes you don't even need orgasms to have pleasure. At any rate, sometimes folks want to have more control. Uh, and so that can be a nice thing to have. And when we have some experiences that happen over and over again that are not favorable, we create the story that it's going to happen again. Oh, no, it's going to happen again. Then it happens again and again. And, oh, my God, you keep psyching yourself out, and it happens over and over again. Um, and this can just be that, just the story in your head. And that's not necessarily an easy one to change. It doesn't mean you just press a button and all of a sudden, woo, new story. It means that you do work to create a new story and have new practices and new experiences that uh, reaffirm and solidify the new story as your uh, the default. So in listen to the podcast. She has a lot of things to share. You talked about experimenting with pelvic floor exercises to strengthen the pelvic floor. How about this? Take the focus off of your cock. Right. So if you're if you're getting so excited and you're about to come too soon, I'm going to come too soon. I always come too soon. Slow down. Take some deep breaths and focus on your anus, April. Uranus. I love my anus. Focus on your Uranus and try to relax your asshole. Everyone, let's do it all together now. One, two, three. Ah, relaxing the asshole. When you notice you do that, you notice that your the the cheeks of your your butt cheeks they kind of relax. Everything kind of sinks down a little bit. And if you had any tightness or holding in your cock area, hopefully it can relax that too. So this is just again going to be a cliff notes version of what we will offer you because there's a whole episode on this. But this is totally. 100% workable. I am so happy that you have a partner that is supportive, that isn't shaming you. I tell your partner, give them a high five, tell them I love them and uh, give them a big hug from me virtually from afar and um, continue on with the work. But really when it comes down to that time, when you're going through that, I'm going to come too soon. One, notice the thoughts, interrupt the thoughts, slow down, take some deep breaths, And really try to relax the bottom part of your body, a.k.a. your anus, and see what happens. You could also try some anal breathing, taking some deep breaths into your ass. Mm, I just Uh, did that right now. It feels so good. Does your ass feel nice and relaxed? Feel bigger? Does it feel smaller? Does it feel like it's ready for a big dildo in April? Yes. Okay, I'm going off topic. How big? How big? So at any rate, I also want to say that this is actually super common. I've had a number of partners that have had this either during our relationship or at some point in their lives. Um, and I've had a number of those same partners that have learned ways to work with it and now it's no longer an issue for them. So, um, continue to learn, to listen, and you are not alone. And this is something that you said has been here for quite some time. And I'm, and also I I like that you're trying to stay away from the porn, but really, um, trying to take the energy. And also another sex educator, Charlie Glickman talks about this. I think he says, um, breathing into other parts of your body, right? It's just anything you can do to take the energy off of your arousal area, AKA your cock. So maybe try even breathing it into your heart or into or relaxing your lower belly. Maybe that will help to relax that area. So, um, get the tension out of there and the focus and see what is possible. <sighs> okay. So this episode, by the way, you'll hear us say this on the episode. Actually, maybe not because we said it's the end of the episode. We love this speaker. We're going to have her back. Keely Rankin is amazing. I learned so much from her. 
Uh, you might hear in the beginning me kind of asking her some questions about her education because we have a lot of overlap in our where we've, we've studied and what we're passionate about. She is so informative, so her. inclusive, so well spoken, uh, and I I just I I really love a sex educator that speaks without shaming language and is very informative, very up to date with their information, and also is just different from the rest of them. So really, you're there's this is incredible, and I didn't even know a lot about delay late ejaculation by the way that's so interesting to me yeah i didn't either yeah yeah it's it's there's there's so much here so this episode yeah. really it's one of my absolute favorites that we've recorded this year if not overall so i'm yeah. really happy to share what we uncovered with yep. all of our listeners here chip will you read us the bio I Tell absolutely us all about Keely. Can't wait. we love you Keely. Keely rankin is a sex and relationship coach pleasure advocate and a sexy preneur she works with individuals and couples who want to embrace their innate desires build sexual confidence and fully realize their sexual potential she has been featured in media outlets such as Huffington Post and Oprah magazine as an expert in male sexual struggles and where she created and premature ejaculation master- mastery video course. Let me just say that again. Yes. A premature ejaculation mastery video course. Say it five times to get a prize. Oh, for geez. men to learn to last longer in bed from the privacy of their own home. To learn more, visit KeelyRankin.com. That's K-E-E-L-E-Y-R-A-N-K-I-N.com. But first... This podcast was brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped offers all the right tools to keep your hair groomed above and below the belt. I'm a huge fan of a well-trimmed bush. I like to get in there when I'm going downtown. And a nicely Manscaped bush makes all the difference. That's why we love the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. It's all you need to keep those family jewels a-shining. The Perfect Package 3.0 includes Manscaped's Lawnmower 3.0, an electric trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, so this trimmer reduces nicks and snacks on your nuts. Manscaped also offers the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, perfect for the sweaty summer months, as well as the Crop Reviver, a nice smelling testy toner that will give you a little pep in your step. And as always, Manscaped is giving our listeners 20% off and free shipping when you use the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping when you use the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. The treasure hunt is over, y'all. It's between your legs, and Manscaped will help you uncover those beautiful jewels. All right, let's get back to the show. It's cool for me, though, to meet other people in the sexuality field that took a Comey. Um, and I mean, I took it to, to get more body based and heart based and less heady practices to work with clients as, as well. And so it's really, really good. And there wasn't a lot of sexuality people in my class. It's not like, it's not really about sex. So, um, yeah, it's cool to see someone else that did that. So did you get into sexuality and then, and then and we'll, and we'll ask you one of our questions on here will be to tell us your story, but just for my own knowledge, did you, did yeah. you do were you on the sexuality path first and then brought in Hakomi or, or did you do the Hakomi path and then brought in sexuality? Yeah, I was on the, I want to work around sex and I have no idea what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I actually went and got, uh, my certification in sexological body work and oh, then okay. was like, I was like, Oh yeah, I think I want to work with people. Like this seems interesting. Cause I just had no idea what I wanted to do with sex. And then yeah went back and got my master's and then went through the somatica program, which I think Amy, you did as well too. I did as well. Yeah. I realized that we should just be recording. We're already recording. So this oh. should probably just be part of the podcast. Sure. <laughs> so, cause we're it's already true. in it. Otherwise yeah. we're just going to go back into it. Like yeah. tell us again. Yeah. Because it's already happening, but it's so, so cool to hear. I had no idea that there was so much overlap here. I'm just going to like go with what we- Hey everyone, we're already recording. Uh, <laughs> with <laughs> Keely. Yeah. It's Hi. Keely Rankin. Are we saying that right? Keely Rankin. Yes. Okay, uh-huh. cool. So you already heard us talking about some things, everyone. Um, but uh, Keely and I are realizing that we have a lot of overlap. Um, and so we started to get, to get in the story. And then I was like, wait, we should probably start talking about this. So Keely, let's dive back into your path <laughs> and how you got in the world of sexuality. Because I'm going to start the podcast when you said already, you started with, I didn't, I wanted to get into sexuality. And I didn't know what that was. Um, so share, so start from there and share a little more with our listeners. Yeah, so went and got uh, my certification as a sexological body worker, realized that I loved working with people. It was fun. I was like, okay, this seems like a good path to go. Um, Went back, got my master's in counseling psychology, 
then went and worked, uh, got certified as a somatica practitioner, then did a bunch of Hakomi stuff, um, done the attachment training, the character training, which I highly recommend if anyone's considering some Hakomi stuff. They're great. Um, I also worked a lot with John Wellwood, who recently passed away. He was uh, like an amazing man who was one of the first people who sort of brought uh, Western psychology and Eastern meditative practices together, mostly Tibetan Buddhism. Um, did a lot with like conscious relationships. He actually coined the phrase spiritual bypass. Mm. So he's a really, really neat guy. And then did some RCS work, which we were talking about as well. Did the RCS training and, um, wait, which was recreation, recreation of the self. Of the recreation self. Of the self. Hi. Yeah, just in mm-hmm. case. Sorry. Yeah, make I, sure we. I love that. I love that that practice and the um the aspect of, of organicity. People are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Hakomi April was just asking this question, like, what is Hakomi? And I, we, I've talked about it in the podcast, and I my description of it is um a therapeutic practice. Um, so it's it's not Japanese. Everyone's actually a Hopi word. Um, and is a therapeutic practice that brings in um loving presence and mindfulness and a lot of uh, experiential practices that are all about the here and now Mm -hmm. as a means for healing and working with a client and giving them the missing experience, hopefully, if you can get there, that they didn't get when the original wound Mm -hmm. happened in this bubble in the here and now. And it's really, really beautiful. Um, So in RCS is um, just a a Hakomi uh, teacher's personal a practice that they developed like an offshoot right maybe yeah yeah well so ron kurtz created hakomi and ron was super super involved in the gestalt world with like all the main gestalt people um he spent a lot of time down at esalen fritz pearls and things like that and he after years and years and years of working gestalt realized that gestalt sometimes goes in and um tries to get you kind of tear down your defense structures and ron decided like what if we went and supported the mm. defense structures and non-violently so <laughs> non-violence a huge yeah. principle uh-huh. and so it's i i find i've been studying actually a lot of gestalt taking a couple of gestalt trainings they're so interesting i love them i love empty chair work and um it's interesting though to see kind of like where Hakomi picks up with that real supportive, like helping, guiding, seeing what's in the defense versus like, you don't need to have this defense, tear it down. It's more like, I'm going to support this and mm. see where it goes and why it's here, which I think like, is- like there's a brilliance in it. Like your body and your mm-hmm. whole system is so brilliant mm-hmm. and what, how these things that it develops over time. And it's not necessarily your enemy. It's like a, a, maybe a blessing and a curse, but there's there's, there's definitely good stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's so cool. Uh, okay. So this, I don't want to go into many tangents about why I relate to you in this, but I, okay. When you took somatica, did you see now that you've done a COVID, did you see um, all, or you did a COVID first, I guess the overlap there and some of the things you're like, Oh, I see. They took some, they, somatic people took a <laughs> Well, so, so Celeste and Danielle were getting trained in Hakomi when they started somatica. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes. I didn't know yeah, another origination, how that real original. Lots, yeah. lots of RCS actually, lots of Hakomi. Okay. Yeah. Tons. This is the Bay Area, everyone, because you live in, you were in the Bay Area person, you live in Berkeley? Uh-huh, okay, Bay, cool. uh, San Francisco. Actually, okay. just moved from San Francisco up to Hillsburg in the last Oh, two I love Hillsburg. Oh, wow. <laughs> wine country. So Wine country. So, Keely, we have you here today. Obviously, you and uh, Amy have all of this alignment with Somatica. This podcast is just about us, though, yeah. so. <laughs> It's going to be about and our trainings and how, how we work with clients. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah so, I know. Yeah. Which we, we actually have never done a, a show specific to how have we never done Ejac- yeah. like ejaculation, delayed ejaculation, mm. premature ejaculation, which obviously we want to dive deeper into. So mm. uh, if you're comfortable with talking about like the definition of premature or and or delayed ejaculation, that would be awesome for our listeners out there that may have maybe a preconceived nurse, notion, 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 notion. <laughs> yeah. So, so I consider myself, um, a male performance struggling expert. So I sort of help men the, the three main sexual struggles are delayed ejaculation, erectile dysfunction, and premature ejaculation. I normally call it ejaculation control because premature ejaculation is a, it's a loaded word for a lot of people. Um, but after working with a bunch of people and not honestly being able to fit everyone into my practice, I realized that I could create an online course for people because essentially it's like these, this method in which I created to start to work with folks. And I was like, I can just stick all of this information into a video and fit mostly like 95% of people in. Mm -hmm. And 
yeah, so I created this online video for, for people and it sort of walks them through all this stuff around early ejaculation, how to overcome it and what it is. And I think the biggest misconception is that men will just get over this as they get older, that they'll be able to control their ejaculation. And my definition of ejaculation control is just the sense of knowing when you're going to orgasm and getting to make a choice around it or ejaculate and getting to make a choice around it. Mm. And so if there's this sense of like, you're going into an erotic experience you have no idea what's going to happen with your body. Sometimes it's 30 seconds. Sometimes it's five minutes. Yeah. You probably want to work a little bit on control. So you feel like you have a relationship with your orgasm or your ejaculation, and then you get to make a choice about how you want that to happen. Mm-hmm. I, I like, I like that you said you simplified the definition of that as you actually just have a choice. And because so many people think like it needs to happen, you know, for X amount of time. And if you do it too soon and I was like, well, too soon for whom, you know, what is, what is, who, who defines that? Very subjective. To porn define yeah. that or did the person that you slept with that said it's, it's not, and you're not lasting long enough. And um, so I like that. It's just that you, you have a choice and you get to make that choice and that you are learning how to do that. And maybe you knew at one point and then that changed, or maybe you never knew how to do that. Um, can you explain to us why, um, I'm going to go move away from premature ejacul- ejaculation, go to the term ejaculatory control. Um, and I guess you didn't talk about delayed ejaculation too. Um, so maybe we could talk about both of them. I'll throw a bunch mm-hmm. of questions at you. <laughs> why is ejaculatory control an issue for, for most people? What are the main reasons why this is an issue? And then as well as what is delayed ejaculation? And- yeah. So delayed ejaculation and early ejaculation are totally different. Early ejaculation is actually often... Um, most of the time an anxiety issue. So as arousal builds in the body, so if we take the imaginary curve from one to 10, one being like, I'm a little bit interested, four being I'm hard enough to penetrate something, and nine being the point of no return. As that the, the body starts to build arousal, the anxiety increases at the same rate. And so as you sort of pass over that five on arousal, you're married, I call it being married to your anxiety curve and the body just shoots over into Mm. ejaculation. So there's no relationship. If we go back to kind of the Hakomi model, there's no relationship with how to hold arousal in your body. And so men start to, they start to fill the build and it's kind of a chicken or, or chicken or the egg thing is like what came first, like coming too quickly and feeling anxious about it or feeling anxious and then coming quickly. It's hard to say everyone's a little bit different, but um, oftentimes it just builds on itself over and over and over again. And so the issue becomes deeper and deeper and deeper. So this idea that like, oh, it just happens for young guys. And as you get older, you grow out of it. Oftentimes that's actually, that's not the case. It's just kind of feeds on itself over and over again. And delayed ejaculation is completely different. Um, oftentimes, so that just means that there's an inability to reach climax. So as the person starts to move higher in the arousal curve, they get stuck somewhere normally between like a six and a seven on the arousal curve, and they can't find their pathway over into that nine, the point of no return. So, mm. so I so interesting because the sex question, and we're after this we're recording an intro and there's a sex question that's from a vulva owning individual. This was not part of this episode, but they're saying, they're essentially saying, if, you know, if I'm, if orgasm is a wave, I'm, you know, I'm at the six to eight mark before crossing over the wave, but it's really hard for them to go over the wave. Mm. Um, so is this really different for vulvas versus penises or is it a similar process in how it's working in the body? Um, in the delayed, it's very similar. The, de- the, similar, the delayed part, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't have you know a penis, so it's hard to say exactly what happens, but I do sometimes struggle. I, I did actually for many years struggled with delayed orgasm and really mm. like struggling to find it. So I have a really strong sense when I work with my delayed clients. I'm like, I know exactly what that's like. Like you're just stuck. You're just stuck. And the more you try and get to it, the further away you get. And then next thing you know, you just shoot down that curve and you're like, how did I get here? And there's so much disappointment. And, you know, I think, you know, people with vulvas can sometimes fake it or make it seem like that. But, but, you know, people with penises, it's a lot harder to fake. I mean, they can, if they're wearing a condom, they could fake it, but it gets a lot trickier and there's so much pressure. There's so much pressure around like, how hard are you? And when do you ejaculate? And what does that look like? And so, yeah, it's complex. (laughs) That's, I think that when you're talking about this and I've never thought about this, I wrote a blog on our, on our website months ago about how I could only orgasm by self-pleasuring for years and years and years. Cause that's only, I think my brain connected 
pleasure and orgasm to just like when I would self ma- like masturbate, right? Self pleasure. And so I had all of this delay in orgasm and, and ejaculation when I was in a partnered situation. And it took me so long to break that because it was like my, I'm, and I'm assuming that's what happens. Like you associate the release with something specific, right? And that's what causes you to have this ejaculatory delay. Mm-hmm. And so that makes so much sense. It almost blew my mind. And I've learned just over the course of, of the years um, how to do that just because like how to actually orgasm even with a person by using communication and also incorporating toys because I know I can actually orgasm when I use toys. So that's really interesting out there if there's anyone experiencing that. Maybe they, they're so used to, and I can imagine penis owners a lot of times, they maybe think about something specific that helps them orgasm when they're on their own. And then when they're in a partnered situation, there's other energy involved. They could be like, Ugh. so um, the question though there, there was a question which I have <laughs> is um, when we're talking about uh, like top tips. And I, I don't like saying premature ejaculation. I think I loved your, uh, ejaculatory I, I control. Mm-hmm. Yes. So your top tips for folks out there working with this ejaculatory control, what would those be? Yeah. So, I mean, I can go through my five step method if you want. It's, it, I'll try and yeah. keep it brief. Cause it can, I can sometimes run into like, well, and you have a stomach. whole online workshop for this too, yeah. that we'll talk about more at the end, but yeah, so you'll get, we'll get, everyone will get cliff notes, cliff notes, cliff notes, cliff notes. And okay. uh, cliff. if you want to go in cliff Clifford's notes, <laughs> and if you want to go in deeper, we'll give you the info for the online workshop too. Yeah. So essentially there's like, there's five steps to the method. The first one is breath. Breath is by far the most important piece uh, or the most important tool to learning how to control your ejaculation. This is because breath gives you access to being able to feel your body. And we actually want to teach people how to connect with the sensations in their body instead of letting them just move quickly through them, which is often what happens for people who struggle with early ejaculation. Breath is something you never master. It's not like, oh yeah, I figured this breath thing out and I never have to think about it again. It's something you get to constantly return to. And there's a specific way of breathing that helps you connect with your body. And also we really want the breath to send the message that everything is okay. Because essentially we're fighting or we're, you know, trying to create a relationship with the fight or flight that's starting in the body as the arousal starts to build. The second step is learning how to breathe into your asshole. Mm -hmm. So when the body orgasms, no matter which gender, your whole pelvic floor actually pulses. And so people who are moving quickly up the arousal curve often start to clench their pelvic muscles as an attempt to like stop, like I'm going to stop my ejaculation and actually makes it worse because it tightens those muscles and those muscles have to tighten to actually release into ejaculation. So learning how to actually breathe into your asshole is the tool I'll come back to that in a second but it's like it's the tool to come down the arousal curve when you're ready so learning how to release asshole and then breathe into it the the third step is understanding where you are on the curve so there the, I talk about the curve in two places we talked about this a little bit there's the arousal curve and the anxiety curve and it's being able to track within your body through your breath using that breath to help you know where you are on that scale from one to ten and starting to separate the arousal curve from the anxiety curve because oftentimes, like I was mentioning before, those two start to just move together. And so it's like, can you hang out at a five in arousal and let your anxiety curve be at like a two or a three? And again, once you sort of get over that five on the anxiety curve, it's really, really difficult to get your arousal back down. So it's sort of like you want to stay under that anxiety curve. And The fourth one is called surfing the sweet spot, which is like finding in your own body a place that you can stay comfortably without your anxiety popping up. And coming down the arousal curve is a really, really important tool to learn, actually. So you use that anal breath, which is step two, to bring yourself back down. And that just takes time and learning and repetition. And the fourth, the, the fifth step is learning how to spread the erotic energy all over your whole body. So there's not so much focus on your cock because oftentimes what can happen too, is there's an over-focus on the sensations on your cock and you sort of forget what's happening in the rest of the experience. And so the whole body starts to sort of like tense and tighten. And the idea is that we want the whole body to just be soft, to be able to release, to be able to breathe. 
slow everything down and start to actually enjoy and allow in the pleasure versus that sort of like, oh no, if it feels good, I'm going to come too soon. We want to like really get away from that messaging that the pleasure is bad and bring in the pleasure is good. We just want to teach you how to teach whoever is trying to learn how to hold the arousal in their body. That's my quick and 35 steps. Yeah. I'm so fascinated by this, especially the breathe into your asshole part. Um, so this is specifically for ejaculatory control issues with, I, I, I feel personally like I can't control when I orgasm and I really mm-hmm. reference to orgasming sooner than I'd like, not, not delayed ejaculation. No, delayed is totally, totally different okay. and actually much, much more complex. Delayed oh. ejaculation is probably one of the more complex. I normally tell folks that are coming to work with me on that, like, don't expect anything for four to six months mm, of change. Yeah. Um, with, with ejaculation control, depending on how severe someone is, depending on sort of like what's happening in their bodies, anywhere between a week or two to six months to a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just it's yeah very very interesting because I've talked to a lot of folks of all all body bodies you know you know all penis owners and vulva owners and the in, in betweens that uh, that do have either something along the lines of I come too soon usually that's a penis owner not usually a vulva owner although I do know some vulva owners that are frustrated with the fact that they're always horny but it's not that they come too soon is usually not not the issue mm-hmm. like my um, pants make me horny right? yeah well that's great like, I think about sex 20 times a day and I'm like I'm jealous I would like to do that yeah. like, no it's a problem um but I but yeah it, but I think what's really what is really common I, and, and this is again mostly about penises but for, for vulva owners and um, with the way sex is designed uh right now is very penis centric mm-hmm. uh and very goal oriented and very, you know, if you don't come, something is broken or failed. And this is for everyone. You know, this isn't just for, for Volvo owners. But so I like this idea that they actually work similarly. Um, so for all you Volvo humans out there, and this can be really interesting for you to listen to as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the formula for that then for delayed ejaculation for folks who have a hard time getting to that point? Yeah. So delayed ejaculation, there's, so there's a, it's, it's oftentimes pretty complex. You know, April, one of the things you were mentioning was sort of like how you had trained yourself to masturbate really, um, made it difficult when you, you were with a partner, which totally makes sense, right? There's two primary ways we have sex in the world with a, you know, solo practice or with partners or a partner. And so of course, when you ch- transitioned and you started to play with people, like it would be really difficult to all of a sudden now take this pr- primarily like solo experience and move it into a partnered experience. There's a lot more going on with partners, of course. And so if it's difficult to find orgasm there, that would make sense. And you know, one of the things I always check in with people about is sort of like, how are you masturbating? Because sometimes there's a particular way in which you're touching your body, either with toys or watching porn that just conditions your brain. Like it just becomes this habit. Like, you know, what we do, what, what's, I can't remember what that quote is, but it's like, we just, you start to do the same thing over and over again. And the body just learns that's how, that's how we release. And so it's really being able to expand your access to, not expand your access to pleasure, but expand how your body's able to take in pleasure and receive pleasure. And so that often starts actually with sh- you know, sort of changing up the way that you're masturbating and expanding the ways in which you can find orgasm from that. Um, another super, super big piece, which is often really complex, is just a, a lot of trust and um, what does it mean to lose control? Because essentially releasing into orgasm is a loss of uh, control. Like your body just does things and makes noises. You make faces sometimes, you know, there's all sorts of things that can happen in that. And so it has a lot to do with like, how do you trust people? Can you let yourself release into this space and just sort of like be with what's going to happen? And for folks who've never orgasmed, because I do categorize delayed, um, uh, orgasm actually with folks who've never orgasmed. And that can be a really, really big piece. It, even solo, um, finding orgasm in, sol- in, this, in their solo play is like what happens and they start to reach that edge of the nine where you start to feel like you have no idea what's going to happen next. And this is sort of jump off into the middle of nowhere. And like, and how do you trust yourself that it's okay to move into that place? Um, and there's one more, I'm trying, for some reason I'm forgetting what one of the other common reasons is, but, um, it's delayed. Oh, this is the other one. Um, 
and have finding access to their fantasies. So like we talked about before is like, if you always go to this certain place in your head to find your orgasm, if you're always going to these certain fantasies and then a, another person's there and you feel like you can't go to those or you need a certain type of play in particular, like maybe you really like to be choked or spanked or I'm going in the more kinky world, but it could be anything. So it's sort of figuring out like what are actually are your turn-ons and how do you move into that with a partner? How do you let yourself communicate? Like April, you were talking about before, like how do you actually communicate? What are your needs? What are your wants? Yeah. Mm. This is so why the- I, had to take, I had to take a porn break, by the way. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Keely, so- but I, because I could only come with watching porn forever. And it's that's important, one. right? Mm-hmm. Because I was like, oh my God, this is, I didn't want to class it as an issue because I'm like, at least I'm having an orgasm. And it was also really challenging when I was in a partnered experience, sexual experience that I was like unable, I was unable to orgasm because I was always like, I was just used to accessing porn to orgasm. So that's a great, that's a good tip when you said to kind of go outside, expand your, your typical, uh, what checklist of how you orgasm to expand that. And that's why I did the porn fast. <laughs> I was like, I'm fasting. What we call it, we call it, yeah, faster strike. I'm on strike. I'm on strike. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's some really good tips. Something else that you had a, so many uh, really wonderful things to contribute right there to uh, the the delayed piece. Um, I wanted to ask you a question because I get asked this a lot at Hot Octopus, and I this is you know I have what I say, but ejaculation and orgasm, especially within mm-hmm. penis owners, are not always hand in hand. And this is something that I I would hope that people understand, but they don't. And they think an orgasm is going to be linked to this ejaculation or that an ejaculation would be linked to having an orgasm. Even for vulva owners, I would say. Yes, absolutely. So I just wanted to hear a little bit from you on that because that came up and I thought that would be good to touch on. Yeah. When I think about orgasm, like I think about, I often when I'm talking about with clients, when I say orgasm, I'm talking about a full body orgasm. So meaning like from the tips of your toes, to your fingertips, to your head, everything sort of lights up and starts to pulse and the energy flows through the whole body. And you know, there's a way in which like the the back arches and depending on where the energy runs, there's different noises. There's this real feeling of like, you can't help it. Like the body has to express. And once the pulsing releases, there can still be tremors, but there's a huge sense of just like, oh, like something lets go, something releases, something softens. Ejaculation is just like, for, for penis owners, it's just, there's something comes out right? The ejaculate comes out. And actually for, for vulva owners, and I actually have found this when I was watching porn, I actually don't watch it anymore because I just have basically ejaculations. I found like, yeah, I could have those, those involuntary contractions in my pelvis, but I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing actually moves inside of me. It's just like, okay, yeah, there's this release, a release. It feels good for about 15 seconds. And then it's like, I just go back to whatever I'm doing, like washing the dishes. It's like nothing even happened. Mm -hmm. And so I actually just distinguish it from like, how does it actually feel inside of your system? Mm -hmm. Like, do you actually feel a deeper connection with yourself? Do you feel like something really released? Does it feel like there's a changing experience or is it just like these contractions happen? And sometimes, you know, men, who have early ejaculation are in such a contentious relationship with that ejaculation part because it's caused so much upset in their lives that they are so upset after it happens. Mm. Like I I sometimes talk about um, the arc of the erotic experience. So there's like the beginning section of, of sex, which is like all of the foreplay, meaning like the date, like you're getting ready, you know, it's going to happen. You go to dinner, kissing starts. And then once clothes come off, it's the middle section, right? You're playing around, there's genital touching, more physical contact. And then there's the end, which is like releasing into orgasm and then the cuddling or whatever feels good to do after. And for men who struggle with early ejaculation, that whole thing sucks. Like the Mm. whole thing is anxiety producing and scary. It's like knowing that they're going on the date is just like, we can't sleep at night, you know, hurting, upsetting their stomach. And even so much so that a lot of the men I end up working with have stopped even trying to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Like, because the whole erotic experience is so uncomfortable for them that they won't, they might be flirting with some, somebody in the bar. And then when we used to all go to bars, um, (laughs) and, uh, on Tinder, they're flirting on Tinder, (laughs) on Tinder, (laughs) but they'll never ask that person for their number because they're like, I can't fulfill any of their desires. That's why it's happening. Just 
It's, it's actually, it's hard. It breaks my heart every yeah. time I hear that because I'm like, oh, well, but, but so many more women, I think are more understanding. And they're like, no, they're not. They're not. Trust me. They're not like they're, mm-hmm. it's, it's, they've had so many bad experiences or, and, and so I think what happens when you quickly move through that middle stage of, of, um, the erotic experience into this end and this end doesn't feel like rewarding or satisfying in any way. It's like, um, it's just a really disappointing experience overall. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast was made possible by Uberlube. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant that enhances sex and intimacy. We receive emails from listeners who have tried Uberlube and the feedback is unanimous. We never knew lube could be this good. It's also less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes, and there are thousands of doctors recommending Uber Lube to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks experiencing dryness. Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on my body. And it isn't just for sex. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth before an oral sex session. Totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's beautiful. It looks like a cosmetic product. So I just leave it out on my nightstand totally shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off plus free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made beautiful animated modules and super honest short videos to give you ways to reach even more pleasure. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives. We all know pleasure is fluid and ever-changing, so why not add more tools to your pleasure tool belt? OMGS is for everyone, so whether you are a vulva owner or you just love vulvas, OMGS will give you the techniques to get your O face on. There are two seasons to choose from and hundreds of gorgeous videos to explore. So go see what science says about pleasure and visit omgs.com slash shameless. That's omgs.com slash shameless to get $5 off your OMGS access. Again, omgs.com slash shameless. Go check it out. Now back to the show. Yeah, especially if you had people, all it takes is one person to shame you. And they don't even yeah. need to do it in, in, a, in a mean way. They can say something that's just like, oh, it's over. And then, bam, everything's downhill from there. This yeah. permanent neural pathway. But usually pain. it comes out like you're done already. Yeah. Something like that, mm-hmm. right? Which is... But I'm saying how simplified it can be. It's yeah. just like, oh, that's it. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm totally not going home with any strangers ever I again. I, okay, I want to pick your brain on something that doesn't have to do with penises again. But so we had a guest on our show and uh, she said that she um, thinks that the she has specific ideas because you were talking about different types of orgasms and that the one where you're watching porn or um, or maybe maybe it's using sex toys externally. I'm curious what you think the difference are is between clitoral and internal orgasms and that the whole idea of what you the orgasm that you described, um, that is the whole body vibrating all of this energy. And then I've had these experiences with these type of orgasms where it's like transcendent. And I don't know if it's one 15 minute orgasm or like a whole bunch of different ones in 15 minutes. And I'm like, I feel like a witch. I'm like, I'm not, I am just so more alive than anything <laughs> on the planet and how I feel after that. Oh my goodness. Um, but it's not my everyday orgasm. And I'm curious what you think about that. Do you think that um, clitoral stimulation with fingers, mouths, or sex toys, um, that you can have that type of orgasm? Or is that type of orgasm, in your opinion, more an internal um, experience or a combined experience of both? Um, Well, first off, I would say everybody's bodies are so different. And finding that big, full orgasm has so, I mean, there's so many aspects that have to go into that emotionally, um, you know, hormonally connection to, you know, yourself. What did you eat that day? How well did you sleep? I mean, there's so many aspects I think that really go into priming our bodies to be able to release on that level. I would say, I don't believe necessarily that 
there's a specific place on the body that would necessarily create a stronger orgasm than, than the other just depends on the person. Cause it's, a, I'm always coming from a more scientific perspective. And when I think about that, I'm like, okay, well, where are the most nerve endings joined together? And the clitoris, well, has a lot. The clitoris is actually a huge organ that goes way back into the pelvis and down and around. So it's like, well, yeah, we definitely have nerve endings in your clit, but what if the orgasm actually comes from deeper inside? And so, um, oops, April it, dropped her headphones. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry. It's like a, like an avalanche. Yeah. Came so sorry. <laughs> Yeah. And so it's like, it, I don't know that it necessarily is dependent on that. And not yeah. all people like vaginal penetration. So like internal stimulation, it doesn't do anything for them. And, and my belief is like, it's probably because their nerves don't coagulate there. Like there's just not enough stimulation to bring them into that level of sensation. Yeah. And some women don't really like clitoral stimulation or they like it, but they don't want to. I mean, it's so people's bodies are so complex. So to say like it has to happen in any sort of formula, I think is way too over prescriptive and putting sex into a box that I just, I think we should all just blow the lids off all boxes. Like they don't need to exist. I'm, I think in general to find that it does, it really does. And it starts to stigmatize and then you feel bad and you're like, I'm not doing it right. And this whole thing with sex toys and I'm not enough. I would say it's more easy or you're, it's going to be more, you're going to find a deeper orgasm on a more consistent basis. If you can spend more time in your arousal. Mm -hmm. So not just rushing through. It's like if you can stay in arousal for a more extended period of time, it's more likely it's going to lead to that big releasing orgasm. But again, it has so much to do with I mean, so many different aspects. It's that's, like, yeah, that's so true. That's what happens with the company with Hot Octopus and the actual, like the products that we make, the Pulse products, they're yeah. an oscillator. Um, that causes oscillation causes involuntary ejaculation Mm -hmm. in penis owners, regardless if they have even spinal cord injury patients or they've had a prostatectomy, they can still achieve uh, an orgasm and or an ejaculation. And people always ask me, so uh, how can, like, is everyone going to like this? Or they ask me like, uh, so many questions. And I'm like, every body is so different. Whether I don't like, I, I personally have, I struggle with an orgasm just from penetration, right? I need external stimulation. Everybody's so different. So I love that you brought and you touched on that. And because there is, and there's no hierarchy of orgasm. And I think Amy was alluding to that when we had a prior guest to be like, yo, no orgasm is better than the other, right? There, I mean, you could talk about the fast food orgasm of porn, right? Where it's like, okay, I watch porn because I want to just hit it and quit it. And I just need to like get off or whatever, but you're right. That's like a 15 second release instead of this deep whole body experience. So getting in touch with that. And like, uh, I think that's important. That's the important piece, the, the gold right there that what you just shared. And we know that things, even outside of sex and orgasm, we know that, that, you know, deep emotions or physical processes of euphoria or some sort of intensity gets intensified when we take more time. We build up arousal, we build up connection. And, you know, so taking outside of sex, like I see April and I'm like, hey, April, it's so great to see you. And like, say, we have a connection that's great. But I take my time really like connecting with her and going deep into conversation and like looking her in the eyes and dragging that out. And then you feel more, there's more available. And so we live in kind of, the fast food, hit it and quit it, get it done. Busy life culture, it's it's instant it, gratification. It's instant for real. insects and outside of sex. And so yeah. I, I like what, I, what you're saying is what I think what a big takeaway, and we have, we still have more, two more questions for you, but a big takeaway, I think we can take for all this, regardless of if you have a vulva, you have a penis, you're coming too soon in your opinion. You're not coming when you want to or coming at all is that, um, taking time to slow down and connect with your body it and, 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 or with a partner, but with the experience and the feelings and the sensations that are available, um, is kind of the gold there. And it's not Being an easy arousal. journey. Yeah. yeah. And your arousal. I mean, it's, and it's not just like meh, overnight. I like that you actually gave a time span, like it could take four to six months, could take a year, like, damn it. But this is the practice. And yeah, I, re- I really value, we talk to so many different educators and authors and, we have our own stance on a lot of things that's much more inclusive. And I I like that you state that. Um, 
it, I think it really fits in with our belief in our model sure. that when we are more inclusive and open-minded that everyone is different and but the slowing down and taking the time to really do the work and the practices and, and the connection to our bodies and to partners is 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 where the gold can be found um so can you tell us you also do work around I'm not going to say the word erectile dysfunction, just said it, but I'm not going to say it, um, ED, erectile dysfunction, but also just um, uh, having control over the hardness of your cock. Um, and um, can you share some info about that with our, our listeners? I know this episode is going to be more about the ejaculatory stuff, but can you share a little bit about that work and what you think our listeners should know about that? Yeah, so ED stuff is is somewhat similar to the delayed the delayed piece too is sort of like, how do you actually get connected with your body? A big part of ED is performance anxiety. So it's the feeling it's again, it's that sort of like chicken and the egg thing of like, did I not get an erection with someone? And so now I think that's going to happen next time. It has a lot to do with the mental state that someone sort of comes into the erotic experience with. And the, the best tool that I found, like the number one tool, the number one tip for people learning to sort of come back from this place of being shut down erotically with their, with, their bodies around ED is to be able to learn about their sensations and to learn how to follow sensations in their body and to be able to feel like, okay, that feels good. And I'm going to let my body continue to move towards that without blocking it. Cause oftentimes there's sort of like this, um, it's sort of like a defense system or a defense structure can sort of come up and block the arousal from moving. And, uh, and that can be that, that performance anxiety piece, like that fear of like, uh Oh, am I going to get hard? Uh Oh, does she like me? Is she going to think I look, you know, my cock is big enough or some, some sort of insecurity can come up. And so it's like, how do we actually bring everything back to pleasure, back to relating to your body again, slowing down, and seeing if you can just enjoy the experience, like shifting from trying to get it all right to just learning what feels pleasurable is super, super important. Mm, that's some good information mm-hmm. and suggestions. And yeah, you might be one of my favorite educators. I think so too. The way <laughs> I feel like oh, you, thanks. <laughs> you could be the third member of Shameless Sex. Yeah. So we hey. have, um, yeah. she's in the Bay Area. We could do the, 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 the triad. <laughs> oh, has, we have Zoom. Yeah. Yes, we do have Zoom. Uh, that, thank you, Keely, yeah, for amazing. all of this awesome, I think, so important and like relevant too, because it's relevant to all bodies, all humans, not only folks that are experiencing any ejaculatory issues, control situations, uh, even even for those vulva owners out there that want to do more work around these types of things. If so, can you talk about, we, we touched on your online workshops and your offerings, but can you just talk about how people can work with you, find you, uh, plug you on social media, all of the things? Yeah. So you can just find me at my, my name, which is keelyrankin.com. And we're actually launching a new website, I think tonight. So it's really exciting. Yeah. So excited. New pictures, everything. It's really exciting. Um, and then my Instagram is just the tips sex coach. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm on I'm on Facebook, but not as active anymore. So yeah. probably the best place to sort of follow me is on Instagram or come to my. Website. And you do work with folks like if they want to do one on one, or is it mostly yeah. just the workshop sessions? Yep. No, I work with individuals and couples and, um, everything is online right now for the foreseeable future, not doing any in-person work, but when I do, I'll be back in San Francisco. You don't have to wear a mask, right? When you do zoom. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) Just in case. No, I heard the latest evidence is that COVID goes through zoom. It goes through this microphone right here. No, that's the latest conspiracy theory. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Some trails. It's coming through the trails. You know what? Bill Gates made that intentionally so that we we would all die and need to buy the vaccine. Okay. No, no. Um, Don't go through the rat, that rabbit hole. Quick. Can you also, before we close out, can you say, so you you the online workshops, do you have video series? Um, we can, Mm-hmm. what they are yeah so the only one I have live right now that's that's up and moving is the premature ejaculation one I do name it premature ejaculation just because of google search and how many yeah. people find it it's just easier to find it that way but I've been working on a bunch more ones about confidence around touch around communication so lots more coming but that's the only one that's currently live that you can access Awesome. Well, we would love to have you again yeah, come, come back on Shameless Sex and Anytime. talk about 
all mm-hmm. the, your offerings and, and more dive deeper into some other topics. And uh, for all those out there, Keely spelled K-E-E-L-E-Y, Rankin, R-A-N-K-I-N. So you can find her at KeelyRankin.com. And Keely, you are a gem. You're an amazing ejaculatory <laughs> expert. I feel like I'm aroused just thinking about all the ejaculations that are going to happen after your this show. I saw your magic wand plugged in in your room. Yeah, by the way. well, it died. Okay, last night yeah. I plugged it in. Oh, <laughs> no. Her, her partner just came back yesterday. I was like, oh, I know what happened last night. I was checking that out. Mm. Oh, and tell you all of our listeners, just so you know, April <laughs> talked about hot octopus. We're talking about the magic wand. If you're interested in any of these toys, you can go to purepleasureshop.com. You get 15% off with coupon code shameless sex. We have that. What was the hot octopus? That's what you talked about. I talked about the pulse, like the uh, solo essential. Well, There's the, 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 the duo. Yeah. So the oscillation that can help you have yeah. involuntary ejaculations. Ooh. And honestly, there are so many amazing sex toys out there nowadays. Like th- We've had sex tech episodes. So yeah. even if you are into internal stimulation or external play or anal, there's something out there for you. Yes. And last but not least, I just want to give a shout out to Margins Wine. Amy and I, I'm back on the wagon. I'm drinking again. About to have some. Uh, We have been huge fans of her fabulous wine, Megan Bell, for a few years now. And she just launched some new... Uh, bottles of some fabulous boutique wine. So go to marginswine.com, check it out. We have coupon codes. If you buy some bottles in bulk, it's not really bulk. It's like six bottles, 12 bottles. No, three to six. See, I always fuck it up anyway. That's because <laughs> I prefer to buy a 12 or more. Okay? She does. She's Let's be real. Case, yeah. Let's be real. Uh, so check that out. Get on her mailing list and you will be in the know just like Amy and I. And I'm going to do one more call to action. You right now listening to this amazing episode with Keely Rankin. Go to iTunes and give Amy and I five stars. Why? Because it helps more people find out why they can have amazing ejaculations and it can help people find more folks like Keely out there that are helping us all improve our pleasure and our lives. So five stars, iTunes, love you long time. We will do more bad review readings on Instagram, Ooh. but don't leave us a bad we review. We don't want your bad no. review. <laughs> We're going to read the good ones and the bad ones. We still love you too. We yeah. hope you have good sex. All right, y'all. We'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.